Hello guys, uh, I am Ashwin. Uh, I am a core team member for uh, GDSC ASCB. So uh, welcome to the session on uh, JavaScript. So today is our third session on, Java, uh, on web development uh, program. So uh, let us go ahead with the session. So uh, this is this will be our agenda for today. First, let us go through what is uh, what is JavaScript. Then let us look at what are the variab what is variables and what are constants. Then let us go continue the session with primitive types. Then let us look at uh, what is what does dynamic typing mean and what are objects. Then let us continue with arrays, functions, and uh, the document object model. So, uh, what is JavaScript? So, uh, JavaScript is basically a language that enables you to create dynamically updating content. Uh, it's a programming language that allow, allows you to uh, dynamically update the websites. It helps you control the multimedia, animate images, create games, and much more. So, uh, where ca uh, what can you do with JavaScript? So uh, with JavaScript, you can uh, add interactive behavior to the websites. So uh, recently we had a session on HTML and CSS. In that we learned how front end looks, how the user interface should look. But when you press a button, what should happen? Uh, how, how should a button react? How should a web page load? All this will be taken care of by the back end and JavaScript is uh, and JavaScript is powerful enough to do that. Then we can create web and mobile applications. Uh, we can build web servers and we can develop uh, server side applications. Uh, then it is used in game development as well. So uh, next one of the question which many people might have is where does this JavaScript code run? So uh, basically JavaScript code uh, most often runs on web pages uh, inside the browser. Uh, but it can also be used to run on the server side as well. So uh, JavaScript has multiple frameworks as well. So on the front end, we have uh, React.js and Angular, uh, which helps you develop amazing U UIs and interactive UIs. And on the back end, we have the Node.js, uh, which which is a runtime environment for the JavaScript, and you can host your application. Next, let us look at what are variables. So uh, variables is basically a, a container in which uh, which is labeled. Like so, suppose you can see an example over here. So John is a name. So uh, telling that now a uh, name is a variable inside which we have the content John. Similarly, you can see here age is a, uh, a variable name inside which uh, 25 is the value of that particular uh, container. So um, how how can you uh, create uh, variables is that you could use a let keyword uh, which helps you create a variable. So uh, first let us let me show you an environment. Uh, so I'll be using VS Code to show you some hands-on sessions. So uh, first, let me create a HTML page, which can be through which we will see what's exactly happening. And then let us also create a JavaScript page. So uh, in the HTML, let me just give a boiler template. So this is a boiler template and I'll give a hello world program. Uh, all of this has been covered in our previous sessions, so you can go back and take a look at it on our YouTube channel later as well. And uh, I uh, and once the HTML page is ready, I have to link my JavaScript to this. So I'll be using the script tag to uh, so basically JavaScript uh, can be linked using the script tag, or you can also write all the JavaScript code in the same HTML document as well. So I'll give a source. So uh, as we saw here, uh, let name. So I'll just uh, type in this for you. So let name is equals to addition. And uh, every JavaScript uh, line ends uh, to, uh, has to be terminated using a semicolon. Now let us run this index.html page and see what happens. Now I am using this open with live server. This is an extension which helps me auto reload the pages so that I don't have to do it manually all the time. So as we can see here, so uh, you can see only hello world here. You might have a question that where is JavaScript seen here? So uh, you can use a, uh, to check what is happening. You have to go into the uh, browser settings. So you can right click and press on inspect and come to console here. 
so we have declared a variable but we haven't printed it yet so we'll use console dot log so uh, to print or log the whatever we are doing like now we have a variable name uh, name which has a content of validation you want to view it then you can use console dot log and give it a name okay uh, okay so, so as you can see validation it has been printed here so in i although i have given my uh, example as a variable here it is log it is showing me what is the content in that so this can be used as your backend and uh, so when you are creating uh, good applications and you only want this thing to print, but when you press this, you want something to happen. You can uh, have variables and stuff to uh, and conditions and uh, everything so that uh, the development process is good. Uh, next, let us look what are constants. Uh, so uh, variables can be reassigned. Now suppose you have a name. Uh, now I've given the name as validation. Now if I update it uh, to something else, that value can be updated. But in some scenarios, you might not want that. You want uh, something uh, to be permanent, and you don't want to change it anywhere throughout your program. In that, uh, that is where the const keyword comes in. That is, so the const keyword is basically uh, they are also variables uh, where the uh, keyword, the particular variable name cannot be reassigned to anything else. And these variables are restricted to the block scope. And these constants can be uh, declared using the uh, const keyword. And uh, I'll show you an example of how this works. Now uh, you can see here. Now if I put example is equals to uh, boat. If I save this, you can uh, and I come back here. Uh, so you can see that boat has been printed. But when I try doing this on a constant, that might not work. I'll show you that. So when I use const user cons user is equals to one. And I try to console dot uh, I'll try printing this. So console dot log as I told you console dot log is used for printing and I'll use user. As you can see, John has been printed, but John has been printed. But when I try reassigning this, now suppose I give U S E N Mike. This won't work. See, it will say that assignment to constant variable. It will show you an error that it can't be reassigned. So this is uh, this is constants. Next, uh, let us look at the primitive types. So there are uh, five primitive types. That is a uh, string. Uh, which we basically saw now whatever uh, words we have been entering that is John Mike all these come under strings then we have numbers now uh, in compared to other programming languages uh, when you uh, declare an integer or a floating point or any kind of other numbers it will still show you as the type as number itself it won't show that it, uh, it is a floating value or anything like that it will show you it as a number itself in JavaScript next we have boolean that is a true or false uh, next we have undefined and null so uh, null is basically where you have assigned something uh, you have created a variable but you do not want to assign anything to it uh, in that case null comes into play next let us look at uh, some of the reference types uh, so uh, when you have a html document and you want to access those elements or uh, you want to um, check on those like you want to access those elements and you want to update or any do anything you want you can use objects to do that so uh, let us look at objects uh, so objects are basically variables which can take many values in the form of key value pairs. So uh, that is basically uh, so you can see here in the example down here. I have declared only one variable as details and uh, I, under details I have given the name and the age. Uh, so you don't have to create multiple variables and then uh, access them. Uh, it won't be that much organized to access the variables in that case. So and uh, so you can declare the object using this form. And then uh, how do you access an object? You can use the variable name and you can use the dot notation. So when you use a dot notation and now suppose over here I've given details dot age. So it will come in, it'll search for the details and inside details when I give a dot, it'll search where the age is. So when I put details dot age, it'll give me an output as 20. So uh, let us try a hands on with this. So um, let us create a object with uh, USN details. 
or to uh, create an object you have to uh, let object name equal to and the parenthesis and uh, at the end of the parenthesis you should have a semicolon because it is a variable but it con contains of many values so here let me give my uh, name as john then it will be uh, separated by comma here you don't have terminate because you have already terminated in the end then you can give a variable named uh, age so age you, for the uh, integer values or any uh, number values you don't have to mention the double quotes it will directly uh, take it as an integer itself then uh, maybe i'll give an id so uh, we have created an object here now let us try ob accessing this object so now i'll give usn details now uh, suppose i want to ac access the name i want to access john so i'll first let me see let us see what happens if i just give usn details here you can see name is john age is 26 id is this much this much so uh, now if you want to access only john or age or anything of the, that sort you can just come here usn details you can use the dot notation and uh, now suppose you want the name you, you can give name make sure that your case is same all the places because uh, it is case sensitive now see i can see john now suppose if i want to access age uh, if i want to access age 26 so uh, this is how uh, objects work uh, next let us look at uh, arrays so water arrays water arrays so uh, array is a basic array is basically a data structure uh, which consists of uh, a list of items and uh, these items can also have different data types and uh, when you declare an array you don't have to specify the size for it in, in javascript you don't have to specify the size for it because it is dynamic in nature that is if you want to increase the size of an array you can easily do it uh, without uh, specifying the size of an array and you can just continue doing with it so uh, let us look how uh, arrays work so uh, here is an example so let me declare so let i have to give an array name so you can see the syntax here let or const or anything you want array name and then you have to uh, enter the details into it so let me give it as colors and orange red blue and uh, let me print this so as you can see uh, i have an array of elements with three elements that is orange red and blue and uh, you can access each of these elements using the square brackets now suppose i want colors i want orange color so the indexing starts from zero. So if I save this, I'll get orange as the output. So uh, this is how arrays can be used in JavaScript. Next, I have uh, functions. So uh, Java. So what is a function? So function is basically a set of instructions that can be performed uh, under uh, a particular block of code. So um, now you want to uh, like basically functions are very useful in coding because uh, you can write a particular now you want to do a square of numbers you can just uh, you don't have to write the square code for each and every number you want to perform you can just write a function and then you can call the function with whatever particular respective value you want and uh, then you can uh, access the uh, i mean you can use the functions in that way so the syntax for function is you first you have to use a function keyword and then uh, you have to specify a function name and if you want to specify any parameters, you can do that. So uh, let us try the square number function once and see how it works. So uh, now uh, there are multiple words. So uh, in to uh, use the variables, make sure that there are no spaces or stuff or no dashes as well you can use uh, something like this known as the camel notation that is i start with a small letter and for the next word i use the capital letter this is known as camel notation
in parentheses. And uh, I would I'd like to give a number here as my parameter. So. And then uh, for the function, you don't have to terminate it in the end in the end anyways. So then uh, let us return. The num you want to return a square, right? So let us return, return number star. Number. So what is does this? It uh, calculates number star number and returns it to the function. So now let us uh, call this function and store it in a value. So let us say let square num equals to. Let me call this square to numbers and uh, I want the square of a number three. So you can see now this is the parameter. This is the argument. So I am passing three into this. I save it. See, so I got the square of the number three. That will that is nine. So now, if you if I want this uh, to be at any other number, I don't have to rewrite the whole code. I can just call the number with a diff. Uh, I can just call the function with a different number. So if I save this, you can see it will get updated to four here. So uh, that is the main use of functions. Uh, let us go to the next part. So uh, next is the uh, document object model. So uh, what is document object model is. Um, it is basically an interface for uh, dynamically accessing the content and uh, it can be used to style the document, update the structure, update the HTML uh, page according to the conditions using if else or uh, switch cases and anything like that. So uh, this document object model, um, uh, it, it ha basically it helps in defining the properties of HTML. So uh, every HTML page is read as a, uh, every HTML element is read as objects. So uh, it helps this document object model uh, helps in defining the properties of HTML and uh, uh, the uh, methods of uh, and there are something called document object model methods which helps you to access these elements and manipulate it however you want. Uh, now let us look at an example of a form validation. So uh, let us look at that. Uh, let me add some of the HTML content. So. Um, validation. Then uh, let me give you a paragraph tag saying that now we, we are creating a form in which a user should enter a number which the uh, form should accept it. Now uh, let me put it like this. Enter a number between 1 and 10. So this is the paragraph tag. If you uh, want some help on HTML, you could go and uh, check out our previous sessions. And I want an input box. With uh, an ID as number. And then. I'd like a button. So when I press on that button, what should happen is uh, it should agree that, that whatever the value has been entered, it should be between one and ten. So button. And then when I press that button, what should happen is it should call a function. Which uh, whose name will be uh, let us say my function. Uh, you, the my function will be writing now in the JavaScript code. So let me just comment this whole part out. So to comment, you could use this slash and star. Now uh, let us write some the our my function the code how what should happen when you execute when you press on the submit button. So. So I've de declared the function now. I'll explain you what is happening. Just give me one second. So 
So you might be wondering what is this document dot get uh, element by ID. So this is how you access an element by uh, from the HTML page. So you see here that we have uh, created an ID called number under which there is like when you press on the submit button, what should happen uh, is mentioned over here. So uh, you, when you get the element by ID as a number and you get that value, now it will read that value whatever the user is entering. Now. Um, let us create a variable to check uh, to output what is ex what hap what is happening. So now let us put an if condition. Now this is uh, an if condition. Uh, let us see how it works. So is an an so uh, is an an is a keyword which uh, checks if a val if a particular value or a particular uh, area is empty or is it uh, full. So let us uh, keep it if it is if the condition is uh, null or if it is less than one. Or if the value is greater than 10. We are uh, telling them that. Invalid input. But if it is if the value is between it, it is not empty, it is less than one and it is greater than 10, then we say that the text is OK. So most of this uh, content is used for the passwords or the form validation or in particular uh, places where um, the, the field should be entered correctly and no special character should be there. So we can put that input valid. If that condition is not satisfied, if the condition is uh, not satisfied. And then we will. So now we want we want to send uh, send back. Uh, now uh, we have computed what is happening, but we have to notify the user that yes, uh, uh, whatever uh, the output is, is it an invalid input or is it a valid input? Uh, we should uh, tell it to the user. So let us create a demo and let us send now. Uh, let us send the text value back to it. So we can save this and uh, here we haven't added the demo. So let us have a pad a paragraph tag with ID as demo. So uh, we can we'll try checking what's happening here. So you can see that form validation has been given. We have created a submit button and we have to enter a number between one and ten. So let us see what happens if you enter two. Oh, sorry. Uh, we have to send it back to the inner HTML. Not we are not fetching the value. We are sending it back. So it will go back to the inner HTML. So this this is the inner HTML, the demo part. So uh, the number two is valid between one and ten. So it is uh, so it, it says input is valid. Now what if I enter a number eleven? It should show me invalid input. See, you can see that it says an invalid input. So uh, this is how uh, you can add backend to your uh, frontend HTML page. Now whatever you can see here, this is frontend. Now, but whatever number you're entering and you're pressing submit button and what the output is coming here, this is all backend. It is being performed on the JavaScript part. Thank you.